If you're looking to make your first 10k with Shopify dropshipping, this is the only video you'll ever need again. When it comes to finding the best course on YouTube, one rule of thumb I always like is which course actually gets the best results. So going on over to some of my previous stores, we have 46,000 in a single week, then we have $100,000 within a month. And I'm not the only one finding success with this. In my Discord, you guys have shared some awesome results too. Here we have 1.2k for the day, $500 for the day, more subscriber stores, 2k in the week, almost 400 in the day, and even more subscriber stores. Here we have 57 checkouts converted with a 6% conversion rate, which is actually super good, and then we have $800 in a single day. So today's video is going to be broken up into three main sections. To start it off, we're going over product research, where I share with with you a beginner friendly method to find profitable winning products with ease then we're gonna go on over to the store creation I'll show you the best theme how to create product pages that actually convert into sales and I'll be sharing with you my secret list of essential apps and then to finish the video off we're gonna go over some advertising strategies I'll show you a zero dollar TikTok organic strategy that anyone could take advantage of but then we'll also go over my personal tip TikTok ad strategy that has allowed me to scale stores to six figures within 30 days. Now, people charge thousands of dollars for courses and mentorships that has all of this information in it. And all I'm asking from you is to leave a like on this video, leave a comment down below. I reply to every single comment and also subscribe for the latest and greatest drop shipping videos. Now, if you're wondering how much money you actually need to get started, I would say a hundred bucks is like the minimum. Shop Shopify every month is $1, then you have to buy a domain which is $12, and of course we have to order the product to actually make content with it or run ads to, so again it just sort of adds up from there. But a general rule of thumb, I would say 100 to 1000 bucks. if you are somebody who doesn't have a lot of funds to invest, I'll be sharing with you a super low risk cheap strategy that doesn't really cost much, but if you have a little more funds available and you're looking for some faster results, then it's going to be a little more expensive than just a hundred bucks. Now, before we get on to the product research methods, if you're wondering what dropshipping is and how it works, I'm gonna cover it in like 20 seconds. Let me explain it super simple. So here's a product that's currently going viral. It's this volcano diffuser. It's super aesthetic and actually pretty badass. So on AliExpress, this thing goes for about $22. So some dropshipper, I just found this website on Google, is selling it for $50. So whenever a customer hits add to cart and pays this store the $50, well, the store owner is just going to go on over to AliExpress and fulfill that order for $22, leaving them with about $28 in profit. Now, we don't use AliExpress to fulfill our orders. I'll be showing you how to get a private dropshipping agent in China that's going to get you cheaper rates and faster shipping. So just stick around and we'll get to that soon. So for product research, there's three main methods. There's the organic TikTok method, which is free. There's using spy tools, which costs money, but gives you a little bit more freedom. And then we have the rogue warrior method. So for the organic TikTok method, you first want to come to TikTok and make a fresh account. Account. So this is called Anthony's test account and we only use this for product research. It's important that you're not liking normal videos on here. It strictly needs to be e-commerce. So come on over to the search and we want to type, I want a refund from here. Click the filters on the top, right? And just change it to this week and hit apply from here. You just want to click on the video and we are going to scroll and build up a list of potential winning products. So this right here is actually pretty cool. It's a Christmas tree that grows. And if you're wondering what to look out for, let's break down the winning product criteria super quickly. So for winning products, we're really looking for four things. The first is a wow factor. Think of the volcano diffuser or that Christmas tree we just saw. Both of those incite that reaction like, wow, what, what is this? And along with the wow factor, you want to make sure the product isn't sold in stores like Target or Walmart. You want this to be something that they've never seen in their life until your ad. Number two 
problem solving products are always going to be better. The Volcano 4 diffuser at first glance is just a cool looking diffuser, but depending how you angle it, you can say how this diffuser is so satisfying and it helps relieve your stress and anxiety and it'll give you a calming sleep and it helps cure your insomnia. You got to always be thinking, how is this product actually going to benefit their life? Like sure, it's cool but how is it going to benefit them? The third thing is a low cost of goods. So on AliExpress, I only like to sell products for around $12 and under. This Volcano Diffuser is a little expensive. The reason I prefer that lower price point, I just found that that sells really good with TikTok. It allows us to sell our products for a super high profit margin and still get tons of sales. And then the fourth criteria is that there's a lot of creatives available. If we're running paid ads, we're going to need some existing content that we can steal. However, if you're doing organic, low competition is actually going to be a good thing because that means your product isn't too saturated and it'll be just a little bit easier to get some traction. Heading back to TikTok though, we're just going to keep scrolling. This is like a, a hand thing to help make your arms more vascular. There's been a few products on TikTok that actually increase your vascularity and the guys actually love them. Like they keep on going viral. So if you're doing organic, like look, 26 million views. I I don't know how much revenue they're doing but they're clearly successful and this is such a stupid product but so so easy so i can easily download some of their videos run ads to it or we can order the product off amazon and just make our own videos in the same exact format as this but this right here is an example of a winning product and whenever you find a product just leave a like on it so we can come back to it next up is this honey honey balm i saw this the other day actually and i added it to my list so it's just a cute little honey thing it's it's super Super aesthetic you know TikTok girls would love this and it's just supposed to be like a, uh, a nice lipstick it makes your li lips feel smooth there's a few different colors again just super cute and these people have a ton of creatives up as well so I don't think this product is too good for organic TikTok because it is going to be pretty tough to get some traction however if you were running paid ads to this product I think it would be a different story but this is a winner too we'll leave a like let's keep scrolling uh, this is a projector it's a mini projector projector uh it's been going viral for many years and it's been sold on tiktok for like the last two years um so i try to stick away from products that i know have been sold for a long time because generally if this product has been on tiktok for the last two years every single person has most likely seen it so if they haven't purchased within the last year it's going to be pretty hard for you to have a new angle that'll make them want to buy this hairbrush is actually sick. This was on my product research list too. Um, that creative in particular was pretty bad, uh, but essentially it's a hairbrush where none of the hair sticks in it. So let's see if he if he has a good example. This guy's TikToks suck. Uh, this guy's TikToks are really bad. So basically normal hairbrushes get hair in it, but this new one, look, you just hit this button on the back and it lets you get all of the hair out super easy. His creatives are not good though. So I wouldn't use his if I was running ads at all um next up is this screen cleaner if i'm honest with you guys this is not a wow factor product let's be real this product is it's just not that cool you spray it on your phone you wipe it down you clean your screen like cool but let's be real it, it doesn't really excite you when you see it also back to his profile here he's trying to put like come on his phone as you can see he's trying to be edgy my advice to you guys is don't do this stupid stuff it's gonna attract the wrong audience and it's not the type of person who's gonna be buying this here's more honey balm uh to keep on going the volcano diffuser i just showed you guys this uh it's a super aesthetic product just makes me say wow right away uh and one thing i noticed a lot of these volcano diffuser stores are super bad uh i checked out some of them the other day and they're product pages just need some work uh you can see it's literally just like a shit product page i don't know how to describe it any better than that like this product page has no flow at all i'll show you how to make a, a profitable product page where people actually want to buy because this right here is just doo-doo this guy is crushing it on the organic side of things he knows how to make tiktoks but he doesn't know how to make a website and that's gonna hurt him this i don't even think is a drop shipper again we're just gonna we'll skip past that if you don't find drop shipping videos just skip past them sometimes you you hit a dry streak this is a cool product i saw but again i don't think it has that wow factor this video has 2 million views so people clearly like it but if i'm honest i don't really see this as like a crazy wow factor product the fact that he's doing as good as he is is uh very impressive 
Uh, so yeah, I mean, he's keeping it up. The product clearly works, um, but I don't know if this is something I would personally test myself. So yeah, this is the gist of product research. You just type, I want a refund and change it to this week. Alternatively, you can type in TikTok made me buy it. And again, we want to change the filter to this week. And it's just the same thing. So this right here is a charging bracelet. Uh, his creatives are very good. It's just a bracelet that's actually a charging cable. Uh, his main video has almost a million views. But again, I don't think this is really an exciting product. It doesn't really make me say like, wow, like when you see the volcano diffuser or the honey bomb, those pop right away. But this at first, it just looks like a normal bracelet. Bracelet. And yeah, he has one video that went viral, but I don't see him getting many other bangers after this one. Uh, here is a, a gun that's also... Dude, I don't know what this is, but this is sick, bro. You, This is a UV cleaning gun. Someone is running ads to this right now. Um, so we're going to like this. Oh, I think... Yeah, where did that go? We're going to like this. We're going to hit shop now. Whoever is running this might be scaling. This might be a low-key winner. So yeah, I'm going to do some more research. I may actually test this myself. This is a one product store. Uh, it's pretty simple design. The, the description could be better. Uh, it's a little bad, but yeah, I think this is a cool product. Again, it had that wow reaction right away. I wouldn't run ads to this though, because it's, it's a gun. I don't know how he's getting away with that, but it's sick. Uh, next up is that cleaning thing again. Here's another person selling it. This page right here literally just has like drop shipping products. So some of these pages are good too if you come across them. So like, look, these people are selling these hooks. They have all of the, the product margins right there. Some of these are really good for product research too. So yeah, some of these pages are good too. Just check, you know, what they're selling on there. Let's keep on going though. This is this back thing. I don't even know. I feel like shipping this would be a pain. It looks big. It looks heavy. I would never drop ship this. It looks like a logistical nightmare. However, again, they're they're doing well with it. The stretchy bar. Uh, these are most likely drop shippers. Yeah, I highly doubt this is a real brand. It's right up in his booty crack. Um, let's go back to the search. And again, we have more of these sprays. These sprays go viral, but I really don't know how. I don't think it's that cool of a product, but TikTok has proven me wrong. Once you do this product research method for like an hour, soon enough your tiktok feed is only going to be like winning products so here's this hourglass thing uh my sand glass i've never seen this before they just started their organic page it's brand new uh so we leave a like on that and remember only stop on the the drop shipping post if it's not a drop shipper just scroll past it here is a door stopper. Again, it's not really a wow factor, but it does solve a major problem, which would be like, you know, people breaking in your home. Uh, a lot of college girls or just young women in general uh, are super afraid of safety and that just plays right into it. Here is this puffing O diffuser. This was popular right before the volcano diffuser. And again, the diffuser at first is more of just aesthetic, but then you kind of sell them on the benefits like, yeah, with the essential oils, you know, it helps relieve your stress. It calms you down and then you can sell them on the benefits um this right here is a pill slash water bottle i've never seen this it's probably good for old people but i don't know if it's gonna go crazy viral on tiktok he seems to be doing well with it like right here don't show this to your grandma like this is hilarious bro um so it's a funny video i don't know how many people are actually buying it though um this is more towards older people and i don't see younger people really needing it that much so that is the organic TikTok product research method. This is how I find most of my winning products, but let's move on to the next one. So the next product research method is using spy tools. And there's two of these that I routinely use on a daily basis. So the first one is Mina. To have full transparency, these guys reached out to my YouTube email, gave me a lifetime account. And ever since then, dude, I have been on this website every day. On the left, they have a TikTok ad section and you can change it to drop shipping. And what this is gonna to do is show you TikToks that are kind of being scaled, but were just started within the last week or two. So I just like to scroll through here and just kind of check what these TikToks are, see if there's any good drop shipping products that we can come across. So the way I do this is I just keep on scrolling until a product pops out. Like here's this cute little toaster. Uh, this doesn't solve a problem at all. In fact, this is more of like a gimmicky product and I doubt it's selling. 
But what you can do is click this little eyeball and it's going to open up a new tab and then you can hit more ads from the shop and you can actually see all of the ads they're currently running. So if you hit that view ads feature and there's like 10 videos, you know they're actively scaling up the product. But if there's just one and it hasn't even been up for a day yet, then the odds are they were testing it and it probably just wasn't profitable. Again, here is this little projector. So let's hit the eyeball. Let's go to their shop. And again, we're going to come to ads from the same store and see if they're running any other videos. So these people are, are definitely, wow. Yeah, these people are running up a ton of ads. We can see this one has been running for 75 days. It only has 37,000 views though. This one has been up for 57 days with 14 million views. So whoever is running the store is doing pretty good. And just to come to my list right now to show you what a, uh, a winning product looks like being scaled. Um, so this first one is this headache mask. This has been going viral for a while now. But when we, when we hit ads from shop, we can see he has three videos. Videos. This one has been up for 8 days, 7k views, 11 days, 12k views, and this one 3 days, 26k views. His ads have been up for 8 days consistently. He's clearly profitable with this product. So what you can literally do is come here download his ad creatives and use these on your own with TikTok ads. And again, you can come to their website and literally view their exact product page as well. Um, so this spy tool just makes it super easy to see, okay, who's scaling and what does their website look like? Another product on here was this door lock. It's like a fingerprint door lock. Uh, I wasn't sure if these people were doing good revenue, but again, when you come to view the ads from the shop, you can see they have a ton of TikToks here that they tested. Unfortunately though, like there's barely any views on them all. They haven't been ran for many days. So I don't think this person is really scaling. This video has 3 million views. So maybe he had one ad that was mega profitable. At the top, another with 10 million views. So is this guy profitable? I have no idea, but is this product worth testing? Potentially. And on top of that, Mina also has a Facebook ad spy tool. So you can filter this by dropshippers as well. So this is this car mount. We've been seeing this pop up a lot. So what we can do is come on over to TikTok and we're just going to type in like car mount and see if this thing pops up. And look, here it is carmount.com. There's literally a dropshipper selling the exact product. So if I see someone selling it on Facebook, I'll go on over to TikTok and see how the competition is looking over there. If you're running ads, check if you can download any of these TikTok for your ad creative. And if you're doing organic, well, if there's no competitors, that might be a really good entry for you to hop in there and steal some sales. And there's also Pinterest ads as well on here. Um, Pinterest products can be pretty good. Again, there's the drop shipping tab. So I would just look through here, see if any of the products pop out. Here are these Christmas lights. What the heck? What the? Whoa. This is really the same thing. You're just kind of scrolling on here to see if any products pop out. So here are a pair of like foldable glasses. Uh, I don't think these would do well on TikTok because the demographic's a little younger. But again, you can always view a product, hit view ads from the shop and see what they're really running right now. So these people have like a general store. It looks like they're testing just a, a lot of garbage on TikTok. But yeah, this is Mina. Tons of awesome ways to find products. Another awesome spy tool is Viral Vault by Jordan Welsh. Like two years ago, I hopped on a Discord with Jordan and he gave me a lifetime account to hear as well. So massive shout out to Jordan Welsh. But Viral Vault has a lot of old winners from Facebook. So what you can do is just scroll on here and whenever I find a product I like, such as this lint roller, for example, what I would do is I would just copy the name, go on over to TikTok, type it in and boom, a ton of products pop up. Another example on Viral Vault is this portable desktop personal electric heater. Uh, usually an air conditioner goes viral every summer and I see this being like the same thing. Uh, so again, I would just paste it in here and see what pops up. Maybe we can type like mini portable heater and see if, if that helps. And I don't see many videos with this portable heater specifically. Um, it looks like this is one, but it's like a Chinese one. It says, if you have no boyfriend, bro, they got sick hooks. Um, and then this one looks to be pretty similar 
as well. Um, it's more of like a review style video. So it doesn't look like there's too many good creatives for this heater. So that's telling me one, it's not really saturated and there's clearly a market for it. But two, if you wanted to sell it, you would have to order it yourself, make your own ads, but this could be a super untapped product as well. And now the third method is the rogue warrior method. Once you kind of take advantage of one and two and you have an idea of what products are winners, you can begin this one. So go on over to AliExpress and just go to the home page from here you just want to open up an incognito tab and just come to aliexpress when you're in incognito it's going to have none of your history or cookies or browsing preferences so it's going to give you a totally non-curated feed it's just going to show products that are currently going well right now so right here we have top christmas picks let's check out this category this plasma pen i know is a winner because i've sold it in the past but there's a lot of issues when it comes to advertising it um many of these beauty products actually will give you some issues with advertising it tends to be a, uh, a pretty difficult niche to stick with but what the rogue method is really about is just scrolling through aliexpress and whenever a product pops out to you where you're like wow um this would be an example uh, of a previous winner it's this eye massager so once you find a product where you're like okay maybe this has some potential you go on over to tiktok and you just type it in so like eye massager and we just kind of do some product research to see how much content there are is and this product has went mad viral half a million views quarter million views 3.6 million views there's clearly a demand for this product one issue could be that all of the customers might have seen it already but you also know there's a huge demand for it so maybe you can find a new way to angle it maybe you can put a new twist on the product and that could just reignite the spark and get people interested in buying and on top of aliexpress you can also come to amazon to do some product research as well so what I recommend you do is come to all on the left side and click movers and shakers. This is pretty much products that are constantly going up and down in trends. So maybe you're looking at this and you see a product pop up that you know is a drop shipping product and something you can sell now. So we're just going to look through this. Here we have a collapsible water bottle. So maybe you find this on AliExpress. It could be super cheap and it could be an awesome product. Okay, let's just keep scrolling. Um, so yeah, just go through all of these categories. It's very similar to the AliExpress version once you find a product that's cool such as the collapsible water bottle we can just go search it collapsible water bottle and i think i spelled that wrong um, so boom we can search that see what pops up uh, this might be the same product or a different one but again you guys get the gist of things you find a product if it has that wow factor and that you've never really seen before then you go on over to tiktok and search it like this product isn't the same one as amazon but it's still pretty damn cool here we have the fuse this is a, an interesting product it kind of it looks a little funky actually but if we view their profile again i i imagine it's a drop shipper they have a few videos up um and this was posted did last year january so this product isn't saturated hasn't really went viral yet um so again maybe this could be something you test too uh, but if i'm honest this this is kind of an ugly product i wouldn't test this personally but you guys you get the gist of it so once you've been doing product research for like an hour, come to your TikTok and look at all of the posts you've left a like on. And from here, you need to go to AliExpress and get an idea of how expensive each of these products is going to cost you. So I really like this honey balm. So this is going to be the product that we're going to be making a store for in today's video. So what you need to do is come on over to AliExpress and just type it in. So we're just going to put like honey balm. I think that's very clear. And right away, here's the product boom so on aliexpress always check the shipping options and you want to select the fastest cheapest option so december 30th 30 cents and this thing cost us three dollars so immediately what's going through my mind is maybe we can sell this for like 15 bucks maybe free plus shipping maybe a dollar plus shipping it's a super cheap product it's very easy to impulse buy there's tons of aesthetic photos for the product it clearly solves a problem uh and yeah i think this is a banger so what I would do is create a new Google sheet and just call it like product research and you can do a few names. So do like product name, AliExpress, cost of goods, TikTok link. So honey balm for the AliExpress link, just come here, paste that in for the cost of goods. We said it was about $3. So again, we'll just come here bucks and for the tiktok link just paste that in right there as well so what i would do is go through all of your liked videos on tiktok and any product that you think 
fits the criteria, you want to add it to this list and build out a massive product research list. For the sake of this video, we're only going to leave this one product, but I do this on like a daily and weekly basis, and I'm constantly looking for the best products to sell. Um, so for the video, we're just going to put the honey balm and yeah. So the next thing we're going to do is create our Shopify store. And right now Shopify is having a deal where it costs $1 per month to run a store. So if you're not taking advantage of this, you're definitely missing out. So you first want to come on over here and hit start free trial. From here, just hit I'm just starting. Uh, how would you like to sell an online store? Do you want to sell products through drop shipping? Yes. Shopify doesn't hate drop shippers, by the way. They're pretty cool. Um, for this store name, this does not matter at all. You can put anything here. The customer is not going to see this. So that's just proof. It doesn't really matter. Uh, where's your business located? Just put wherever you live. And then finally, it's going to ask you to create a Shopify ID. Now you can create unlimited free trials under the same email. So don't think you need a new email for every free trial you're making. Shopify is really cool. I have all my stores under the same email. You can do the same thing too. They won't penalize you for it. They won't charge you more than a dollar per month. So yeah, just, just use one email. Keep it very simple. And just like that, we are logged into the Shopify dashboard. Enjoy three months of Shopify for $1 per month. I'm telling you guys you need to get started on this asap so the first thing i like to do is just select a plan remember it's one dollar a month right now you're not really missing out on anything select monthly basic shopify one dollar choose this plan so once your account is officially made we can just x out of there now before we actually add this product from aliexpress on to our Shopify store, let me just cover the three types of stores super quickly. So we're gonna be making a general store for today's video. Essentially, this is gonna be the cheapest store to create. In my opinion, it's the best for beginners and it's what I personally use. Now, the two other types of stores, just so you're familiar, there's also a niche store. A niche store would be something like Gymshark where they specialize in fitness apparel. The only issue is this limits the products you can test and it takes a long time to build. And then a one product store is something like Blendjet where they primarily focus on like a portable blender. Now one product stores are extremely effective at getting a higher conversion rate, but it's gonna take way more time and energy, especially when you're testing a ton of products. So for the sake of making your life easy, I promise you a general store is the way to go. A general store is just like a Walmart or an Amazon. It doesn't matter what you sell, it's all gonna fit perfectly. So to create your general store, go on over to Google domains and it's basically gonna be shop. We're gonna have a secondary word here and then .com. So maybe like shopwonderland.com. You know, it's just something broad. You can sell anything on there. Uh, this domain's taken, so we'll just get back to the drawing board. Shop Theos. I don't know. You can make words up. Just pick something that sounds cool. Uh, I'm gonna keep testing. Maybe like shopmystically.com. I don't know. Just type whatever sounds cool. So boom, shop mystically. I like this. Uh, you don't really need to overthink the name. Just make sure that it's not too feminine and it's not too masculine because you want every customer to feel welcomed and you don't want to isolate anyone. Uh, so once you find a domain you like, I'm purchasing through Google, just purchase it. And on here, leave domain protection on. I turn off auto renew. You don't need custom email and you can check out. And boom, we're registering the store. Right now we're up to $13 in expenses. Once you have the store bought though, we can return back to Shopify. And the next thing I like to do is customize all of the settings. I just like to get that taken care of right away. So that way we can import the product to our store. We can create a super simple logo, customize the colors, the font. And then at that point, the back end is already configured and we can get selling. So the first thing is to come on over to your settings. And we're just gonna change this again to shop mystically uh, for the legal name of your company. If you have an LLC, put that here. If you don't just leave it blank. And the first thing we want to do is come on over to domains actually, uh, and we're going to connect an existing domain. So we're just going to type shop mystically.com. This is the domain we just bought hit next. From here, you're gonna hit connect automatically. If you bought through Google, it's actually super easy to configure the domain. You just come here and hit yes, connect. And just like that, Boom, it's connected to Shopify. So now the domain is gonna take a minute to configure, but just like that, this is gonna be our primary domain. So if you come to shop, 
mystically.com. It's going to take you right to our store. So from here, we can come back on over to store details. And the first thing we need to do is come on over to contact information. And for your sender email, change this to info at and then put your new domain here and we're gonna hit save. And it's gonna give you this little notice and tell you to fix it. So just click fix this and we're gonna have to authenticate it. So click authenticate and it's gonna give you some C name stuff to add to your DNS record. If you've never done this before, it looks complicated, super simple. So come on over to Google. So come back to your domain and select DNS on the left side. Uh, and we have to add four C names here because there's four records we need to add. All of those are a C name. So come to the type, select C name, and we're just gonna copy this in here one by one. So there's the, the host name, here's the value, and we're gonna move to the next one. So again, copy the host name, paste that there, come to the value, we're gonna paste that there and again we have to choose c name we're just gonna do this for all of these super quickly again here's the third one it's a c name there's the value we'll paste it in there so once you've done four of these just hit save and you shouldn't have any issues you can now return back to shopify and hit authenticate domain uh, it's gonna take some time but i just like to do that in the very beginning from here you want to come to payments and when it comes to paypal select manage and you just want to deactivate paypal from your store uh paypal hates drop shippers if you start to get revenue they're going to hold your funds for me personally they held over 5k for like two years and i had to argue to get it back but other people have had like 50k held 100k held they're not a good company to work with and i wouldn't recommend it and the second thing you need to do is activate shopify payments if you're in the usa i believe you just click this if you're in europe or outside of the us it's going to look a little bit different but it, it's pretty much the same thing so just hit complete setup it's going to take you to this page it's going to ask you for some personal information like your birth date, your social security. So enter all of that information in. And once you're done, that's what's actually going to allow customers to pay with like a Visa card or a MasterCard on your store. And then this is how Shopify is going to send that money to your bank account. Just like that, Shopify payments is all set up. Um, so next up, come on over to checkout. Never use accounts on your store. It just slows the customer down. Your goal as a dropshipper should be to get the customer through your checkout as quick as possible and accounts will slow them down. Customer contact email, uh, you can show them the link to download the shop app. Uh, require first and last name. Uh, shipping address and phone number, I put that to optional. Tipping, I don't turn on. I've seen a decrease in conversion rates with shipping enabled. Uh, and then scrolling down more uh, for consent to marketing, put on SMS email marketing. You can pre-select this if you want. I usually just leave it like this. And then for abandoned checkout emails, you want to have this enabled. Put anyone who abandons their checkout and you can leave this to 10 hours. But for TikTok, the people have short attention span. So I would set this to one hour. As you get more involved with drop shipping, you can set up custom email flows. But if you're just starting off, you really need to be focused on finding the right products and not stressing the dumb stuff like the right theme, the right apps. You really just want to stick to the basics and test your products. So that is it for the checkout section. Next up, come to shipping and delivery. And we just want to come to manage and we can just delete the two profiles here. And we're going to create one shipping profile. Call this USA. Come here, type in United States. Look it, done. And the first rate, we want to do a custom one. Call it USPS standard shipping, shipping and have that free. Um, and then we're going to have another one, custom rate, USPS express shipping. Uh, and you can charge this just like a random amount 795 is cool um, and yes people will pay shipping i used to be scared to charge shipping thinking it would turn the customer off but if you have a good customer people will pay uh, and now we need to set up a shipping zone for the rest of the world so just choose rest of world rest of world um, we hit done and this is basically the same thing it's a flat rate but instead of usps you just call it standard shipping for free uh, and then again, another flat rate, call this express shipping and just make this 795. So there's the shipping for the store, save that. And yeah, it's that simple. So from here, we need to come down to markets. And the first thing we need to do is come to international markets. You want to select manage, and then you want to activate this. This is just going to allow you to sell worldwide outside of the country you previously put. So yeah, it's, it's that simple to enable and you're done. Next, we have brand. I actually never update this. This is a newer feature Shopify implemented, but you really don't need to worry about it. Um, and the next thing we need to do is come on over to our policies uh, and we're just gonna create a refund policy. You're gonna notice too, there's like a bracket right here. I'll just delete it kind of like that. 
Um, we're going to come to the privacy policy. We'll generate this one. And what you have to actually do in here is hit control F and put a bracket. And there's going to be all these brackets in the description. So what you need to do is just highlight those and delete those. So go through the entire privacy policy and wherever there's brackets, just delete them. For the minors portion, it says insert age. I just put 18. And again, get right back to deleting the brackets. Uh, this just takes like two minutes, but there's an absolute metric ton of brackets you need to delete. And just like that, we are almost done. We can hit save real quick just so we don't have to do that again. Uh, now we have the terms of service. You can just generate this as it is. There may be some brackets in the terms of service as well. I believe these are kind of recent. So again, just do the same thing. Control F, figure out where the brackets are uh, and just delete them. Now for your shipping policy, you can make this pretty simple, like just processing time, 24 to 72 hours. This is pretty standard for drop shipping. And then delivery time, you can just say like six to 15 days and bold that, bold that. And we just have something simple here. I literally just typed this on the spot. My shipping policy is pretty similar to this. So, I mean, it's fine. And then contact information, leave this blank as well. You don't need to fill this out. So from here, we need to get the product from AliExpress onto our store. So the first thing I recommend you do is get the AliSave Chrome extension. If you literally just Google it, AliSave Chrome extension, it's the first link. It's a free Chrome extension and it just lets you download AliExpress photos. Um, so what I'm gonna do is is we're just going to hit this. We'll download the product photos. And then I'm also going to download these photos as well because they're a little different. Okay. So now that we have the product photos downloaded, we can actually get the product imported on our store. So come back to Shopify, come to apps, and you want to come to app and sales channel settings. And we want to customize our store. And we're going to be installing our first app now. All of the apps in this video will be 100% free because I know a lot of you are on a budget and you don't need to waste money on apps. So you want to search CJ dropshipping. I'll have my custom affiliate link down below and my referral code if you want to sign up with that. I'd appreciate it. Um, but just add this to your store. CJ basically has all of the products that AliExpress does, but the products are typically cheaper. You get faster shipping and you can fulfill orders much faster. So once it's added to your store, it's gonna give you this green little banner that says authorization success. If you don't see this right away, just come back to your Shopify store um, and click the CJ app once more, hit open app, and then you should get the banner. From here though, you wanna click sourcing on the upper banner. And then you want to come on over to post a sourcing request. You want to change it to individual product and we can actually upload an image of the product we're looking for, which is why downloading those images from AliExpress was super helpful. So right here, we just uploaded two of those. Let's see what pops up. I'm going to open all of these images up in a new tab and see if any of these are the actual product. Sometimes it gives you like a, uh, a decoy product where it's not exactly the same. Um, so right here, this is going to cost us $5.46 for one of those. And that is 18 to 35 day shipping. One thing I noticed with CJ though, a lot of their newer products are seven to 15 day shipping. Um, this one right here is not even the right product not the right product, not the right product, not the right product. And that's why it's important to download multiple photos because we just uploaded three more images um, and we're just going to open all of these up as well and to see how many of these we can actually find. The goal is for you to get the cheapest product on your store. So we opened up a few more of these. Um, this one right here costs $4.59, whereas the original one was $5.46. Um, so we're just going to go with the cheaper option. Next up, we have, it's not even the same product. So the product photos on this one don't really make sense. So we're just going to go to the next one. Uh, and yeah, it looks like we only really found one of these. Um, what you can also do is try searching the product on CJ. So on AliExpress, it's called B Lip Balm. So we can just paste that into the search bar. Sometimes the search doesn't give you the best results though which is why I prefer um, the photo method so yeah this product seems to be pretty low-key uh, that might be it let's just keep looking is this even the same product this one just looks entirely different so yeah it looks like this was the only product we were able to find quick interruption but let's say CJ doesn't have the product you're trying to import well you can actually post a custom sourcing request with any AliExpress product so come on over to tag and just select the niche 99% of the time you can just pick other for the product I'll usually just copy paste the AliExpress name except similar products no we want this exact one uh, for the target price just whatever AliExpress says throw it in there destination country put this to 
wherever you are shipping from. For the purchasing type, you want to select drop shipping. If it's on bulk purchase, it's going to ask how many you want, but obviously we're drop shipping, so that's not important. Uh, then we need to paste the URL. Uh, you can just do the whole AliExpress link. And for the description, uh, most of the time, I'll just leave that blank as well. Um, but from here, you can just hit confirm. It'll post the sourcing request. And once it gets added, you'll get notified via email. But if you also come to the sourcing tab, um, the product will be right here. It says it's pending. And then once the product gets added, you can just click the direct link to it. Um, and then here we go. Now we can sell this product on our store. Um, so once you find the product on CJ, you just want to come and click list. You want to select your store from the drop down for the product type. Just create a new one. Uh, don't worry about whatever you call that. It really doesn't matter. For the collection, you should have a homepage one by default. For your vendor, again, it doesn't matter at all. The customer is not going to see that. Um, and for the price, we can always tweak this later. Um, but for now, we can just price this at $14.95. $14.95 uh, and we can just hit list it now and it's going to get added directly to our Shopify store. Now whenever a customer buys from our store we fulfill the order through CJ. CJ will ship it out. CJ will add the tracking link and they'll take care of all of the heavy lifting. So we can hit view in store now and here it is. We have the default product page. It looks like crap. If you left your description like this I would call you an idiot um, but we can also preview the product page as well. And now we have to do some customizing because we have the product on our store, but we clearly can't sell to the customer like this. Like this is a big, big no-no. So just come to the description, delete that. For the title, we'll think of a, a cool name in a second. For the product photos, uh, we don't really need these right now. We'll update them with something cool. Uh, and let's just give this a save. And since there's only one color, it doesn't make sense to give them that option. So we can just hit the garbage can there. Uh, and now we are left with a totally blank product page. So we need to think of a, a cool product name for this. Uh, and what I like to do is just come on over to Google and again, type the product name in. So B lip balm, and then come on over to the shopping category. And we're just going to open up some competitors who are selling uh, the exact same product. Uh, so if you're having an issue finding the product you're selling, you can try adding plus Shopify at the end of it. And this will just dedicate it to Shopify stores. And we can also just try looking at the main search. Uh, it seems like this product is actually pretty low key. I don't see too many drop shippers selling it, um, which is actually pretty saucy uh, in a good way. And I also just searched B Lip Balm on TikTok and we're going to open up some competitors real quick. Um, so there's B Balms. Uh, let's just open up their website, see what it's about. Cool. It looks decent. And then there's this other competitor here, My B Balm. So let's just open up this link too. The reason we want to look at our competitors is because they may have good product photos um, that we can download, like literally right click, save them and use them on our store. Uh, and we can also copy paste their description uh, and just put that directly on our store as well. So what you can do is just flat out come here and save the image. And, and like this GIF is mad ass. I'm going to show you how to pimp that out. We can also check Amazon too to get some product photos. Um, sometimes Amazon has some really good stuff. So let's just check this out. And also you can download product photos from CJ. But if there are competitors available, you can use their photos. You can use photos from Amazon. You can copy paste the description from your competitor. Now, long term, you can get in trouble for that. But if you're just testing a product, don't make it harder on yourself than it has to be. If you're profitable, then go back, make it unique. But if you start to sell it and you fail, well, then you didn't waste too much time. So I like to have a new folder where I just put all of my product photos. Um, so here's the CJ ones. We'll just put all of those here. Um, and if there's any duplicates, just delete those. So now we've narrowed it down to just like a, a hand a handful of pictures. Uh, so coming back on over to Shopify, we only want four product photos. So I'll drag those all in there for now. Then we'll rearrange it and just pick the top four. Uh, if your product has multiple variants, let's say you're selling leggings and there's like 10 different colors. What I would recommend you do is you pick the top four colors because once you start having more than four, the customer is going to get super confused. Do I want blue? Do I want black? Do I want green, red, orange, yellow? It's a big cluster. So remember, the goal is to get the customer on your store and through your checkout in as quick of a time as possible. So by narrowing it to four variants, you're good. And if your product has one variant like mine, well, we'll just pick four photos. So this photo looks kick ass. This next photo is pretty good, but it has this crappy branding. Um, we can really erase this in Photoshop. 
Um, I can save that for another day though. This photo is good. It's a close up. Um, this photo is cute. This one's cute. I, I dig these four. So we'll just keep it like this for now. I think that's actually real good. And we don't have the ugly Chinese branding in there either. Now for the selling price, uh, this is where the offer comes in. So the cost per item, if we come back to CJ, that was 459. So we can just throw that in right there. Now, generally you want to price your products 3X. So if this is 4.59, we have to sell it for at least like $13. So that means we can sell it for $14.95, $14.99, or maybe we can sell it for $5 and charge them shipping. Maybe we sell it for free and have like $15 shipping. You can figure it out. You can play around with it. Um, but for the sake of this video, we're just going to stick with a basic 3X markup. Uh, we'll round up to 14. I like 95. If you want to do 97, 99, it's up to you. Uh, and then we're going to do a 50% off sale. I can see one of these being like $30. So that's pretty reasonable. Now for the product name, what is our competitor calling this? They're just calling it um, Honey Balm. Okay, so we can call it the same thing. We'll call it Honey Balm. We're going to copy this little trademark off Google right there. Honey Balm. Bam. Just like that. Come to the competitor. For your description, this is where a lot of people get messed up. This is literally how easy. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Doing too much. This is, ah, this is literally how easy you guys can do your descriptions. Just like that. A lot of people, they really overthink this, guys. So you can literally just copy paste someone's description. So from here, what I like to do is just center the entire description. Uh, then click this paragraph thing to get the even spacing. Uh, and we're just going to have to go through this now. Uh, it didn't paste like 100% properly. Um, but you can easily do your description this way. So yeah, if you want to just copy paste their description for a test, that's totally cool. And again, if we view our product page, like look, uh, the website still hasn't been designed yet. But we got our product photos. We have our description. Um, you know, this could be a, a good starting point. Now we still have some more customization to do. Um, so that's the first way, the copy paste method, but let's say you don't want to copy paste. You want to have a little more ethics. I will share with you uh, a product description template that works no matter what you're selling. And this is like very effective, but yet super simple. So start off at the top and say update, or you can say note it either works and say, we are currently going viral on social media and our stock is very limited. We highly recommend placing your order before we sell out. And then you can come here, you bold the note and we just change the color to just a little bit of a red and we can have this as the starting point. Now, the next thing we want to have is a headline with main benefit and then we'll have a paragraph explaining main benefit. Uh, and for this right here, just make this uh, heading one works, make it big. Uh, between these two sections right here, we want to have a GIF. A GIF is important. Then under that, we're going to have uh, an image or a GIF, either works. Uh, and now we're going to have a headline with four benefits. Again, make it heading one. And this is going to be simple. We'll have benefit one, benefit two, benefit three, benefit four. Then under that, we're going to have a third image. Okay, this is pretty simple. And for each of the benefits, you bold like the first half before the little hyphen. Um, so now for this last section right here, this is just going to be our guarantee. Uh, and we're going to talk about our money back guarantee plus shipping information. We come here, highlight it, uh, and we're just going to make that heading one as well. So this is it. This is a winning product description. We have some urgency and scarcity here to push them through the checkout a little bit faster. Um, you can center that, doesn't really matter. We have the main benefit, which is gonna sell them on the product. Then we have the four micro benefits, and then we have the guarantee. So I'm just gonna populate this super quickly. For product descriptions, I use this tool called Copy AI, and it literally just writes product descriptions for you. So we can just put like honey pot lip balm right here and what does the product do so it just put a super simple thing hit create content and we're just going to go through all of these and see what fits the criteria so the first thing we need is our main benefit so boom maybe this is it our lip balm is made with natural nourishing ingredients that hydrates and moisturizes your lips while giving them a healthy subtle glow the honey pot design makes a cute addition to your desk or bag so maybe that's our main benefit we'll just paste it up there now we need the four micro benefits so i'm just going to keep reading these so so this is a cute design, keeps your lips soft and hydrated. Boom, maybe that's one. All natural ingredients 
ingredients, okay? Non-greasy, all natural ingredients, boom. And we just need four benefits and then we're, we're basically done. So this one talks about the ingredients again. We'll just paste it in there. I'm telling you for the product page, like your test, doesn't have to be this insane thing. It just can't look like ass. I'm going to show you some bad product pages real quick. Sidetracked, here's an example of a bad product page. Um, they don't have any images here. They don't have the benefits. They just have the features. It's not going to sell well. Like, it's just not personalized. And like product information, nobody really gives a crap about this unless it's like, like some sort of super technological product. This website has a nice branded feel until you scroll down. This is their description, overview product information like this is just ass no one's gonna buy from this it doesn't look good cool they have instructions at the bottom but they're not telling you why the product is so damn cool and here's another volcano diffuser page but they're selling this little dog snowman costume but again like their product page just isn't selling anything so as long as you're following this format, I can assure you, you're better than like 99% of the drop shippers out there. Okay, so once you have uh, all of your information here, we're just gonna paste this in one at a time. Uh, so here's the main benefit, we'll center it. What I like to do as well is split up the description so that way it's a little easier to read. Um, and if you have the Grammarly extension, you can easily like change your grammar on the spot. And also I recommend bolding some words. So natural nourishing ingredients that hydrate and moisturize your lips. That's a powerful sentence. We'll bold that. Uh, and we still need to think of a headline. So let's think. We're going to say silky, sexy lips. Boom. <laughs> Uh, and we'll worry about the, the gif later um so next up for the headline with benefits um you can say like why people love our product that's actually pretty good uh, and we're just going to take all four of our benefits right here cut those out uh, and we're just going to paste them in okay so here we have the benefits we just said cute design safe healthy ingredients prevents dry lips uh and take it anywhere um, and again, all of that was directly from Copy AI. Uh, so now the next thing we have is our guarantee. And I'll just, I'll give you guys a guarantee. You can copy paste on all your stores. So we could just come here, paste this guarantee in. Then what we need to do is just simply center it. Uh, whenever you center something too, look at the spacing gets really effed up. So in order to fix that, you just, you select paragraph again. Um, so now we have, again, we have scarcity, urgency, main benefit, we have the micro benefits and then we have, you know, safety for them, the guarantee. Now for the gift, I'll show you how to make your own gifts. I've never seen a drop shipper actually show this. It's not like it's uh, a crazy concept. So we're just going to find a TikTok that we want to make a gift from. And ideally, you just want it to be minimal text. I think something like this will work. So if you want to make a gift, uh, the first thing you need to do is download that TikTok. I'm using ttsave.app, but you can use any TikTok downloader. I promise you, they're all exactly the same. It doesn't really matter. So we want to download this and then come to easygift.com. So we first need to come to video to GIF and just upload the video we downloaded. Um, so from here, you want to come to cut video. And let's see, we need it to start at the beginning. This is all good. So we're just gonna have this go from one to two and a half seconds. I think that'll be good. And we're gonna see if, if this cut version of the video looks good, you ready? Boom, that looks good to me. So now we wanna come to crop video and we just want it to be a square. And we can just draw our square in here and just select the area you need. Cool, and we can crop the video. So now we can come here and hit video to GIF. Uh, and now it's gonna take, again, that video we started with and it's gonna convert it into a square GIF. It's four megabytes, so I also will hit this optimize button once it's a GIF. I know it. this is a lot, but this is what I do for every product test. So now we have a three megabyte GIF. It's good quality. It's gonna help our site load fast. And now we can just come here and upload it. And boom, so we insert that GIF, come on. Woo! And of course you wanna center it. So the honey bomb, look at that. So it looks pretty good. And right here, we can put another GIF or another image. I recommend you have your GIFs near the top and then like images near the bottom. Now we just uploaded an image for the bottom real quick. This one just shows the close up of the product. Um, honestly, maybe one of these product photos may even be better for the bottom. It just looks a little more branded, honestly. This photo looks really good. Uh, let's see. Now for the bottom, what we're gonna do is just have this product photo again. And for right here, you know what? We're just gonna upload uh, another image. 
And right here, you know what? We just uploaded uh, another image. So this is our product description. And this is what's actually good enough to convert and get you sales. Um, so we're gonna preview it. Obviously, we still need a logo and to pimp out the store. Um, but from the customer's perspective, like it's extremely visual. It's easy to skim through and read. It shows them what the product's about. Um, and yeah, it's, it's straight to the point. So we're gonna leave this product description as it is now. What we need to do next is one, customize our store and two, we need to create a logo. And then after that, we just need some apps and we'll, we'll basically be good. So for your logo, just come on over to Canva and type in logo. I'm going to show you that the easiest logo ever, uh, just type logo and create a blank one. So we're just going to come on here, hit T to type and just type in your name. So mystically, I, I don't ever put the shop in my logo either. Make this pretty big. What kind of font can we do? 42. That's cool. We're going to center that puppy. And we're just going to change the font. So Montserrat bold is good. You can make it extra bold if you want. Um, another font that I love is Roboto. Hit Roboto. And what you want to do is italicize that. And this one looks really good caps at, actually, mystically. So Roboto, bold, italics is a banger font. Uh, and then the other one I like is Poppins on here. Let's see. Poppins is another good one. Just select it. Boom, make sure that's bold as well. You can do that caps. You can do it non-italicized. You can make it all lowercase. Honestly, Poppins or Roboto, bold italicized is what I would go with. Um, but I was kind of digging this actually. This looked pretty good mystically and it can be caps or lowercase. Doesn't really matter. And we're gonna leave the logo black. That'll make sense uh, very soon. So let's just make it a little bit bigger. We're gonna fill it out. So it's basically edge to edge. Now we can center it. So from here, we're going to come on over to online store and we're just going to choose the default theme, which is, which is Dawn. So this is cool. And we're just going to hit customize. So for this homepage, just delete all of this crap, delete it all. So we have a blank homepage, just keep deleting it. I know it's a little tedious. Um, and what we're going to do is add a featured product, featured product, and then we can delete this multi column. So just have one featured product on the homepage. Uh, and now what we're going to do is come up top and we're going to come to our product page and it should just be this honey bomb. Now, immediately, there's a lot we got to work with. So on this left side, we'll just work our way from top to bottom. Um, for the announcement bar, you can say many things like free shipping this week only. You can say 50% off sale ending at midnight. Uh, you can say free shipping on orders 30 plus. Um, you know, there's literally infinite amount of stuff. So I'm just going to say like 50% off sale ends today. We'll go, we'll go hard with it ends today. Now for the color scheme, you just want to inverse that. So that way it's a black header. Now we want to select header on the left. Uh, and the first thing we want to do is upload our logo. So come here and upload that logo we just designed. Now, most people will be on our website on mobile view. So let's just check how big this is on mobile. Uh, yeah, that looks good. And on desktop, uh, that looks cool too. So I'm a fan of having it middle center, uh, just like that. For the menu, leave this uh, line separator. We can leave, we can leave all of this the same. And yeah, this is pretty good. Now, right here, it says enable product sub suggestion. Just uncheck that um, and sweet. So next up, we have our product information. We can literally delete this first text. Next up, we have the quantity selector. We can leave that too. Um, buy button, good. We're going to uncheck all of these tabs, actually. We're not even going to worry about those now. Um, so just delete all of these. And since we already did our product description, we can remove this stuff at the bottom as well. So image with text, we'll delete. Now for this multi-column at the bottom, uh, if you wanna do something like fast shipping, hassle-free exchanges, and have some like last minute trust, trust you can do that. Um, but to be honest, like that really isn't needed considering we have our, our guarantee right here. Um, going down to product recommendations, shut that off. You don't want that on. Remember, we want people to be on our website and check out as fast as possible. So we don't want them getting distracted on other areas of our website. Um, for the footer, I like to select the inverse of this too. So it's dark email signups is cool. Social media delete, uh, country selector. We'll leave this on. It's just a, a built in currency converter. Um, payment icons will keep our mission. We just delete that. 
Uh, for info, we can delete that. And for this quick links, we'll just call this customer care. And we still actually have to set up our footer and header. Uh, I was going to do that after this. Um, but yeah, our product page or our website is slowly coming together now. Um, so we can see we it's really looking decent. We just got to pimp out our fonts. Um, but yeah, it's coming together. We still need some apps for reviews and stuff like that. So for our accent color, I'm a big fan of just using a nice green for this and just select that for both of those. For outline button, again, we're gonna make that green too, just so that gets a little highlighted. I'll show you how to make the buttons pop a little bit more. Uh, for the typography, um, we're definitely gonna need a more bold font. The best font, in my opinion, is taking poppins and just making it bold, just like that. And then for the body font, again, just coming to poppins uh, and making that bold as well. So far, it's looking pretty decent. Now on the product page, you're going to notice it says shipping calculated at checkout. That makes me want to vomit. So I'll show you how to remove that super simple. Actually, um, just come back to your dashboard and you want to come to these three little dots and hit edit code. We want to come here and type in product and select main product liquid. And we want to come in here and control F and type in shipping. And right here, it says shipping policy, blah, 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 blah. We can remove this entire end if, just delete it, hit save. And if we come back here and give it a little refresh, that shipping calculated at checkout should be gone. Uh, it's just a waste of space. Uh, so boom, this looks really clean. Now, if we click on product information, uh, a few more things. I like to change the desktop layout to thumbnails uh, with the, the carousel there. That way it just, it's nice. You can scroll, your description's kind of congruent. Uh, for the media size, I put this to medium. Again, it just, it's, it's clean, bro. For mobiles, the thumbnails are hidden. I just like it this way because it saves a little bit more space. And yeah, this is, this is basically it. So now we want to come on over to our buttons. Now on the product page, it'll let them check out with Apple Pay or Google. You can leave that on, uh, but on this editor, it's it's invisible right now. I just, I don't know why that is, um, but it is there, just not right now. So what I want to do is increase the border a little bit of this add to cart button. And the main reason I want to do that is just so it pops out a little bit more. So let's see how a three stroke looks. Um, yeah, we'll keep it at two. Uh, I like to round the edges a little bit so it's not as bulky. And I do like a shadow as well. The shadow just helps it pop out a little bit more because it is like a little, it's a little dull right now. So we can do a shadow. We can just do a little more vertical onset, a little bigger blur. Uh, these aren't exact settings you need. Just do what looks good. Um, so this is nice and subtle. And yeah, that's pretty much all you need to change on here. Uh, you do want to come down to cart. And we want to turn on a uh, cart drawer. What this means is when you hit add to cart, it just, it pulls up a menu from the side and it lets them come to checkout. Now at the bottom, it says taxes and shipping calculated at checkout. Uh, we can easily remove this. So if we come on over back to our main store, hit these dots and hit edit languages. So we're just going to copy this and just paste it in here and it should pop up. Aha. So here it is. Um, so this one again, free shipping available at checkout. We'll just replace all of those with that. We can hit save. So now if we come back here and give it a little refresh, it should be all set. So let's just let it load again and pull this open. Boom. Free shipping available at checkout. So the final thing we really have on here then is our checkout settings. Uh, so for your logo, just upload your store's logo. Uh, keep it centered. You can leave the, the logo size medium. Let me actually just go to our checkout page to see how big this looks. I may make it small. Um, it sort of depends from logo to logo. You just don't want it looking absolutely massive. Uh, this looks to be pretty good. Um, so now we just come down for the accents. I'll leave those black. For the buttons, we can make it green. And for the errors, we can leave that as red. Um, for the typography, I just leave these as system. I always have. Now, I also recommend you go to the home page. And remember, we added this um, featured product here. So we just have to select that from the side. So here is our honey balm. Um, and we're going to do the same setting. So we don't need this new right there. We can uncheck that. Uh, we don't need the share button at the bottom. We can uncheck that. And yeah, this is honestly fine. It does say the shipping calculated at checkout here. Uh, since it's on the homepage though, I, I don't really mind. Um, and from here, this is literally all you need to do to test the product. However, we need to add some apps. So let's go on over to the app store. I'm just going to download all of the apps. And once they're downloaded, I'll flash them on the screen for you. 
and boom here's all the apps you need on your store all of these are free to download so i got you guys hooked up let's just work our way down from the top to the bottom cj dropshipping we've already covered this is going to be how we're actually fulfilling orders on our store now the next app we have is this email app this is a default app on shopify now now this will just send out uh, an abandoned checkout email to any customers so let's say they add an item to their cart but they don't purchase well this is just going to send them an email and we don't really have to touch any of these settings here uh, if we if we click edit workflow just make sure this is set to an hour uh, and then you can hit save exit and yeah that's really all you have to worry about here now the next app is called geolocation this is going to be a built-in currency converter it'll probably be on your store when you first create it let's say someone views your country outside of like your your main selling point it'll just pop up with their location whether that's canada mexico united kingdom and we should be able to paste our store's button color there just so it's a little congruent from here though we can hit save and this is it's pretty much done this app you don't have to worry about too much so the next app on our list now is kiwi size chart you only need to worry about this if you're selling like a clothing product so i don't need it for my product but i'll just show you how to briefly install it because there is going to be a point where you sell a clothing product so you just hit new size chart you hit start from empty uh, you put all your sizes here so whatever sizes you have yeah. So for your conversion, what you want to do is select like inches and this is going to let you import the inches. Generally, AliExpress will give you um, the centimeters. So I like to choose the centimeter option and you would just enter like all of your, your sizing chart info in. You'd fill this in on your own. Obviously, I don't have a product now. I'm making this up. Um, but if you look on the left side here, the customer will be able to toggle it from inches to centimeters. It updates in real time. Uh, you can delete these little bottom sections they don't matter and to actually get this on your store all you have to do is step one hit save and then you come to more actions and you click get embed snippet and you're just going to copy this code from here though you would come to your product page and you would click these little show html like little brackets you paste the code up top you save it uh, and just like that, it's going to embed a sizing chart onto your product page. So if we view it, the sizing chart should pop up right here uh, and you can really place this wherever you want. So the next app on here now is Live Recover. So we already set up custom email. So if a customer adds to their cart, goes to checkout, but leaves, it'll send them an email. Live Recover does the same thing, but for text message. And the best part, it just costs $1. So just hit activate here. It's going to take you through a little setup. I would give a 10 to 15% off discount. Uh, that's generally good. And it's going to give you a little bit of instructions. Uh, I'll just show you how to do that though. Come down to step six and just copy, copy that. Then you want to come back to this language editor. This was where we previously added our free shipping and we just want to paste the text that we previously copied. So now whenever a customer's on our checkout page, it's going to give them this offer here. It says phone, receive offers and shopping cart reminders via text message. Um, so from here we can hit finish setup and now just come on over to billing. We want to choose the startup, the free plan, select that. And it's just a $1 setup fee. So the next app on here is review. This is going to let us import reviews from Amazon. Um, but before we set that up, we're just going to set up Uplinky Sticky Cart. This app right here is going to boost your sales. So come to the basic plan. They make it tiny to try and get you to select the premium one. Um, but no, we don't need that. And all you want to do is just come on over to enable. Then we want to come to style and we're going to uncheck this for the font color. Keep that white for this background color. We're just going to copy um, the color green we were previously using. So we can just come here, paste that in for the font size. I typically do 20 and for the padding, we do 24. So let me pull up the product page just to show you what this looks like, because in my opinion, this just looks so damn good. So we're on the mobile view right now. And if we just begin to scroll, once we go past the add to cart button, it pulls up a mini add to cart. And it's only once you scroll past the main one. So that way, no matter where the customer's at, the add to cart button is literally going to be right by their thumb. And it just makes checking out super easy. Now, before we add review, which lets us import reviews from AliExpress, we have have to add a track order page which i meant to do this earlier um, but come on over to your pages um, by default you'll have a contact page just delete the default one they give you 
Trust me on that. From here though, we're gonna add a new page. The first one is just gonna say contact us. And we wanna change this from page, default page to contact. And now we have a contact us page on our site. And to do a track order page, we're gonna add another page. This is gonna be track order. And I'll have this code in my Discord, but basically you copy and paste this, copy and paste the code. We're gonna come here, we're gonna save it. And now we can click these little show HTML and paste our code there. And now when we go back to the editor, you can see we have a track order page. Change the email to your support one. So info at shopmystically.com period. And now when we view that, it's going to be a fully functioning track order page. The customer can put their tracking number right here. When they hit track, it's just going to pull up their order status. Now there are apps that do this for you, but the cost adds up. I remember one of my winning stores, I was paying thousands each month just to provide order tracking. So having this free alternative is definitely helpful. And now the final app is review and this lets you import reviews off of Amazon. Now this app is free to use. However, if you wish to import from Amazon, you will have to come to billing, change the plan and choose the $6 per month version. Once you upgrade, come on over to Amazon and we have to find this product. Um, so there's a few of these. This one has 2K reviews. This one has 455 reviews um, and it looks to be the same product. So what we're going to do is just click the review Chrome extension uh, in the setup for the app. It'll teach you how to add it and you just paste the product page URL. So to get that, come to your product page and at the very bottom, I actually forgot to update this earlier. Um, so just put your product name there. And if you have any like TMs or weird symbols, just delete those. So we're going to come here, copy the URL, and now we can just come up to review, paste that in there and hit get reviews. And now it's just going to say, please wait, do not leave the page. And boom, 200 reviews for the product. Um, The free or the $6 version of review can only import up to 200. So what I like to do is just select all of the one, two, three, and four star reviews. And quite simply, are you ready for this? We are just going to delete those all. So there's 50 reviews. We're up to 150 now. We're going to delete even more. And this just gets rid of all of the clutter. Now what I like to do is come on over to search and type in Amazon. Uh, some people will put Amazon in their name. So instead you can replace that with your store's name. Uh, some people will leave reviews from Kindles, uh, no one here. Uh, some people will post a video in their review. So I search HTML, um, just search it in case something pops up. And finally, you want to search whatever the brand name is on TikTok. Um, so this one says honey and Sakura day and night. She loves moist lips. Um, so let's just type some of this in here. See if it pops up. Cool. Look at that. So using the Sakura night lip, Sakura. So we can just delete those two as well. Again, it's, we can edit it if you want or delete them. It really doesn't matter. So from here, we now want to come on over to our final page of reviews, come to the very bottom and any review that is short or negative, you're just going to want to check it and delete it. So anything that's like two words or less, I'll delete. So just come through here. Uh, if there's a Spanish review, we delete it. Uh, if there's anything that is, you know, kind of steering the product in a negative light, we delete it. So we start with, you know, 200 reviews, but we narrow it down to just the best of the best. So I like to start off with the, the bottom of the last page. Just trust me, don't question it. And once we have the first page done, we can delete. And now we're going to come to the second page. We're going to come to the bottom and we're just going to repeat this. So if there's any reviews that are just really short or negative, just delete it. Um, I mean, these are honestly fine. Like this one just says like, like that's a pretty crappy review. Um, so yeah, I would do a, a mini thorough job here. You don't need to spend like an hour verifying these reviews. Just kind of do like a, a quick skim just to make sure you know that there's nothing shining your product in a super negative light. Also, uh, at the very top, whatever reviews you see first will be the reviews that the customer sees. So if there's like a, a review dissing you at the top, I'd probably remove it. Uh, another filter I like to come to is the picture filter. So we can leave their reviews here, but a lot of times like I'll just delete their photo reviews and upload some of my own. The beautiful thing about review, like we went from 200 reviews to 79 and we can edit any of these, the name, we can edit the, the body paragraph. We can upload dates here. Right now we have only five star reviews, which is not credible at all. So an easy way you can fix that by coming up top and there is the CVS live editor or CSV. 
and you can just straight up edit the photos in here. So I recommend you come to the very bottom because these will be at the back of the reviews. And we're just gonna change these to some four star reviews just as so. I like to have a little four star reviews. If you even wanna do a, a three star for some credibility, that's cool. I mean, we have 70 reviews right now, so it wouldn't be realistic if they were all five stars, but let's say maybe 10 or 12 of these were like a little negative. It's just a little more credible. You know, no, no store has all five star reviews, but from here you can hit save changes and yeah, let's take a look at our product page and see how these look. So now to view the reviews, we want to come to customize our store, come back to the product page. We're going to come to add section at the bottom and we're just going to hit reviews widget. So let's scroll all the way down to the bottom. Just give it a second to load. And here it is, 79 stars. Now, if you're looking at review dates on a product and you're like, bro, these review dates are from like 100 years ago, like two years ago, I'm gonna show you how to tweak this up a little bit. One thing I like to do is hide like this, is it helpful section. Um, you can leave that here if you want. But depending on the product, you're going to get some trolls and they're just going to bombard you with dislikes or leave fake reviews. So just to clean this up a little bit, come on over to customer reviews and you first want to turn on this approval rating. This is just going to prevent trolls from leaving like mock comments or like kind of roasting you. Um, so whenever someone leaves a review, you have to approve it. Then we want to come to customize. And first thing is come to section and we can just begin tweaking this a bit. Sometimes I'll hide the review dates if they're from a super long time ago. Sometimes I'll hide the author avatar, like look right here where my mouse is, but you can leave them on, it really doesn't matter. For the flags, uh, if you're targeting USA only, this will actually help build some social proof. Uh, and I do typically turn off that dislike button uh, and I will enable full content. Uh, just trust me, you want that on. Um, for this button, I'll typically just make it all black. Uh, and then for our star colors, just come to Google and type like review star hex code. Boom, here it is. So this is the one I use. It's just FFD 700. Uh, so feel free to paste that in here. And it's gonna be this bright yellow, looks super good. Uh, and now our reviews should be good. So let's come back to our product page. I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a refresh. And once we come back, uh, it should be pimped out with the new and improved version. So here's the description and at the bottom, boom, our reviews are looking good. Another thing inside of here is it says reviews per page. I'll just lower that to five. Um, it just kind of helps reduce the cluster. So we can save that um, because right now, like there's just a ton of reviews and it feels like you're scrolling forever until you get to the next batch. So by having it set to five, uh, it just keeps the website a little more condensed. Uh, and the last thing I like to do is add the review stars. So star ratings uh, and put that right under your price and we should have the star ratings right here so going to the product page this is the store like we're almost done we have the review stars we have the sticky cart um everything is good this is literally all you need to become profitable um and yeah we have the reviews this is looking so good actually so now we have to come to our navigation and on here, we first have to pimp out our main menu. Um, so where it says catalog, you can either change this to take you to your entire collection, which for a general store, I'll just have it take them to the homepage collection, or you can have it take them to a specific product. Right now, we only have the honey balm, so that's what we'll put there. So we'll hit apply changes. Next, we need to add our track order page. So just come here, track order. Then we need to add our contact us page. And just like that, our website's header is done. So if we come to our website and refresh it, home, shop now, track order, contact us. Now the next thing we have to do is our footer. So come to the footer menu, rename this to customer care. We can delete the search. And the first thing we'll need is our track order page. Then we'll need our contact us page. Then we come to our policies and start off with your shipping policy. Then come back to policies and do your refund policy. Then come back to policies, do your privacy policy. And then come back to your policies and do your terms of service. And we can hit save. Just like that, guys, this is it. So now every time you add a new product to the store, the only thing you have to change is the product page. And again, it's going to be the same format with a GIF, headline with main benefit, photo or GIF, have four benefits right here, another image or GIF, and then we have our guarantee with reviews at the bottom. 
For product photos, again, just have four to six images. And if you have variants like colors, so let's say, you know, you have like a red, green, black, white, whatever, limit it to four max, whatever four you think will be the best sellers. So now we can move on over to the ads portion. I forgot this PowerPoint was even made. We're gonna cover the organic portion first. The only expense for this is gonna be ordering your product and shipping it to your house, and then you can begin making TikToks. The pro to this is that it's cheap. The con is that it does take a little bit longer, and then we'll be covering the ad strategy, which is super easy. The pro to ads is that it's more consistent and you get results faster but the con is that you have to spend money on ads to get those results so if you're on a budget no worry do the organic if you have some funds and you're willing to invest in yourself and you genuinely believe in this start with the tiktok ads okay we are now moving on over to the organic section so there's really three main areas you need to focus on that is a trending audio a trending hook and then having a, a decent format to follow. So the very first thing before I break down the TikTok strategy is to order your product off of Amazon. This is just gonna let the product get to your house in two days, and then you can begin filming content. So with the organic strategy, this is really gonna be your only product expense, just ordering the product online and getting it to your house. If you're not in the USA, or if you don't have Amazon, you can try finding the product elsewhere, or you may have to bite the bullet, order it from CJ, wait 12 to 14 days for it to arrive, and then you can begin making content that way. So the first step in TikTok organic is to create a fresh account. Um, let's just look at the Honey Balm account for example. You wanna create an account for your store. Um, since this is a general store, just call it like shop mystically, mystically shop, whatever you wanna call it, it doesn't matter. You unlock a link for your bio at 1,000 followers. So until you get there, I just manually type it. So here was a, a product I was actually testing. It was this Apex wallet. It's not a crazy wow factor product. Um, I was just testing with mass posting on multiple profiles. Um, but for your bio, you wanna do something like this, like have a little description of your product, then have your offer. So like get yours, 60% off, free shipping, whatever. Now this was a one product store, so bear with me, yours will be a general store. So instead of it being named after the product, it'll be named after your website. So imagine this was shot mystically. And I recommend you create two pages to start off. Both the pages will look identical. However, you can't duplicate the same post, meaning all of the videos you make on this profile need to be different than the one you make on this profile. You can film the same video twice. It just literally can't be like the same video file. It has to be filmed a second time. Now this profile here, look at the views, 500, 500, 500, 600. But if we go to this other profile, file this one was doing ass this one one view one view 200 views four views community guideline strike illegal goods which i can appeal this and get the video back up but you see my point like every profile is treated different so i recommend you start two profiles for your store now for the upload strategy you're going to be posting three videos every single day in terms of when you post the videos it doesn't matter when it comes to going viral tiktok looks at one key metric and that is your average watch time if you have a video that's 30 seconds per se and a viewer watches it all the way through that's 30 seconds of watch time but let's say you have a video that's 10 seconds well the viewer would have to watch that three times in a row to get the same amount of watch time so the secret to going viral is to get a high amount of watch time because people are interested in the video, but it also has to be engaging enough to where they leave a like and or comment. Now, if you're wondering what type of videos to make, just come back to the I want a refund. I would just kind of look at your competitors and see what videos they're making, and that'll kind of inspire you for the flow, the type of hooks they're doing. Um, the hook is two things. It consists of the text on the screen plus the video. So here the hook is my stepsis would not shut up and it shows his hand. This one, Mike Tyson gave me his secret training tool and it shows his bare feet. People love to make fun of toes. 
my progress with the grippy boy okay it just shows it's this one's pretty simple so if you guys are looking for some hooks, I have this Google Doc I put together. It'll be in my Discord. I didn't make all these hooks myself. I just stole them from people who posted tweets. So if you're like, bro, my hooks are on there. Uh, look, look, I stole this from a Twitter thread. I don't know who made them, but yeah, I just, I pasted them all here. So you can kind of copy these or alternatively, you can come to your competitors and use the hooks they're using. Now, when it comes to trending sounds, what I like to do as well is just come to popular dropshipping pages and view the sounds that they're using. So this one is Psycho Killer. It has 200,000 videos made, which is amazing. And if we look at the recent videos, they were made within like the last few days. So what I like to look for is one, a ton of videos, and two, make sure that the top videos under that sound were uploaded within the last seven days. So this was 1016. Uh, it's about two weeks ago. These sounds are kind of old actually. I wouldn't personally use these. Let's come to the next one, 133K videos. Again, this was posted like two weeks ago. I really wouldn't use these sounds. I think he's a little outdated there, but again, it's not like it's the end of the world because he's still getting consistent views. Let's come to the Honey Balm page. Uh, so let's look at this sound, 1.3 million views. Um, this seems like a pretty generic sound. The videos, again, from the last two weeks, it's not like you're not gonna go viral if you use this. It's just not like the most trending video right now. So 300K videos made. Um, again, this, the audios are from like the last two weeks or so. And really good pages are like these slushy cut pages. These guys always be using the most relevant sounds. I don't know where they get it from, um, but you can just view other drop shippers. Again, view the audios. That's a basic ass one. Um, Halloween cute horror two days ago, um, five days ago. So like, yeah, that's probably a decent sound. This one, 215K views. Um, so yeah, you're just looking for audios that are popping off. And I forgot to mention, whenever you find an audio that like hits the criteria as in a lot of views and has recent videos, add it to your favorites. So about one to two times per week, I just like to update my trending audios. So that's really it to go viral. You have trending sounds, you pair that with a winning hook, and a general format is you have the hook, which is like the first sentence and frame of the video. Then you showcase some benefits of the product. So like with the grippy boy, he was showing how his veins come out, you know, and it's easy to use. With the honey balm, you can talk about it making your lips glisten, it being soft, natural, organic. And then at the end, you give some sort of call to action. I would avoid saying link in bio. TikTok is really strict with that. Instead, instead you can say like now 50% off or free shipping or get yours today. Tap our profile to get yours. Uh, there's a ton of variations. Also, when you're filming the TikToks, you can use your own voice for a commentary. You can use the text to speech. Literally look at what your competition is doing or what other drop shippers are doing and see how you can replicate that style for yourself. And one last general rule of thumb, I would post for about four to five days before giving up on a product. Like right here, I was posting pretty consistently. This page was just bad. Uh, and then if we come to this other one, this page was picking up like getting some views. Uh, it just wasn't going crazy viral. Maybe I could have posted some more videos and to see if anything else came from that. Um, but yeah, I would say four to five days. If you're not profitable, then you move on. Now for the TikTok ad strategy, you're gonna need about 50 to $100 per product test. The pro of this is that you get results fast. You'll know if it's a winner day one, and you can also test one to three products per day. With organic, you're testing one to two products per week, but with ads, you can just zoom through products. And if you're consistent with this, you can test 21 products within a week and instantly know if it's a winner. So the first thing you need to do is install the TikTok app onto your store. So just search TikTok and it's this one right here. It's free, won't cost you anything, so get it done. From here, just go through all of the basic information. It's gonna ask you to create a TikTok ads account. When it gets to data sharing, select maximum and then it'll create your pixel. Uh, and that's basically it from the Shopify side of things. So now we can go on over to our ads manager and get a test campaign ready to go. So you wanna hit create and we wanna to come to website conversions. So for the campaign name, we're gonna call this like Honey Balm Test, and we're gonna turn on CBO. So the way the ads manager works is we have the campaign, which is here. When you click the campaign, we have ad groups, 
And inside of each of the ad groups, we have our ad creatives themselves. So a CBO is gonna spend your full daily budget in whatever is gonna get you the best results. So it may spend $5 here, it may spend $1 here, it may spend $15 here, it may spend one penny here. It's just gonna distribute the budget in whatever way it thinks it'll get you the best sales. So for the budget, the minimum you can do is $50. However, I have found that TikTok doesn't always spend your budget when you have it set to 50, but by setting it to 100 bucks, I don't usually have any issues. Now, just because our budget is set to $100, that doesn't mean we're gonna spend the full thing. Um, so we're just gonna call this first one, open one. Uh, won't make much sense now, but it'll come together soon. We're gonna select our pixel here. We're gonna select complete payment because we wanna get maximum purchases. For placements, we only want to do TikTok. For advanced settings, I leave comments on because I like the engagement. And one way you can get around some negative comments is by adding some blocked words. Uh, so right here, I have a huge list of words um, that people have commented on my Facebook ads. So you can pause the video, copy these if you would like to. Um, but yeah, if anyone leaves a negative comment, it'll get flagged and nobody will see it. Um, I turn video downloading off. For targeting, I only do the United States. Uh, if you want to throw Canada in here as well, you can do that. Uh, but generally, USA is all you need. Uh, you can leave the language as all or check English. I mean, USA is mostly English anyways. For the gender, leave this as all. However, because we're selling like a lip balm, I only see females buying this, so we'll select females. Now, I always do 18 plus for the age. There's not a lot of 13 year olds with credit cards buying stuff on TikTok. And if they do, maybe their parents don't know and the parents will be upset. So it's usually best to just use 18 plus. Now scrolling down, you don't need to worry about income, audience, we can just minimize this stuff. For your interest and behaviors, we just wanna leave this all broad. TikTok is smart enough to know who your target customer is. So we're just gonna minimize this and not worry about it at all. And one thing I scrolled past, my bad, is ACO, Audience Creative Optimization. I always turn this on for testing. I found that it just helps my campaign spend a little bit easier. Um, so come down for the time. We just wanna set this for midnight of the next day. So let's come to November 1st and oh, let's we'll put all zeros, so midnight. Uh, day partying, I don't typically do. If you're in the US, you can do 6 a.m. to midnight or you can do like 9 a.m. to midnight. Uh, that's EST time, so 6 to midnight or 9 to midnight. EST. Um, but typically for the test campaign, I'll let it run all day. That way it really milks that full budget. And for our bid strategy, um, you want to set this to lowest cost. There are some different bid strategies, but generally lowest cost is just the best for testing. So now coming on over to the creative page, you want to come to create custom identity and you want to make this your store name. So for us, it is, you know, shop mystically, and you just want to put your logo here on a white background. Now we need to upload our ad creatives here. So for testing, I recommend three to five ad creatives. And in order to get these, we're just going to find our competitor and see what has popped off for them. I wouldn't typically do like these customer conversation videos for a refund. Um, like, yeah, they get views, but they usually attract like a lower quality audience. So what I would try to find for an ad is something that has a proper hook. So right here we have unbox with me. Then you want it to showcase the benefits. So it's made with all natural ingredients. I like for it to have three benefits. So there's the first one. Let's see if there's any more. It comes with a little dipper, that's two. And it's moisturizing, provides the perfect glow. There's benefit three. And there should be a call to action now. If not, we can add one of those in ourselves. I would say this is like a, a decent creative you can test with. So you wanna find three to five of those in total and just download them all. So let's check this next one. TikTok made me buy it. So there's the hook. It's the honey gloss. It uses all natural. So there's benefit one, benefit two, it's healthy. Um, and that's sort of it. Now, generally you want your creatives to be 15 to 30 seconds long. That's usually the sweet spot. If you recall when I was talking about organic videos, if you have a 30 second video and one person watches it, that's 30 seconds of watch time. If you have a 10 second video, one person would have to watch that three times through to hit the same watch time. So you really wanna do some good research here. So remember, you want it to have a hook, 
you want it to show three benefits, you want it to have a call to action at the end, and you want it to be 15 to 30 seconds long. Also, avoid these dumb gimmicky ones. You can test it, but again, it's usually a lower quality audience. So I'm going to look through these. I'm going to find five creatives that fit my criteria. If I only get three, that's cool. I would just avoid ones like this that are like six seconds long. It's just going to be really hard to advertise. Um, so trust me. And for downloading TikToks, we're using ttsave.app. Um, so just hit download here. You can use any TikTok downloader. So just download these. We'll call this creative one. And now I'm going to find four more and I'll be back. So once you have your creatives, you can just upload all three of those and hit upload. Um, I recommend you really do good research. One disclaimer, TikTok will recognize if you're stealing um, videos. So if you notice like your CPMs are wicked high, like my volcano diffuser had like $20 CPMs and I, I made the videos myself, but let's say I had stole those TikToks and was using them as my ads. Well, sometimes TikTok will notice that and they'll throttle your performance. So there are some workarounds such as opening up like the video in an editing software maybe you add a little filter maybe you trim a second off the end in the beginning maybe you replace the audio these are all viable techniques and i go over these more in depth in like my 24 hour challenges however you can copy and paste and since this is a beginner tutorial i just want to show you like the most straightforward way to do things however it is important to note that it does get a little more complex. Now for your text here, I always just say like, get yours on sale today. And I only use one line of text. Some other things you can say like 13 units left, get yours now. Maybe you say like 50% off sale ending soon. Maybe you say free shipping this week only. Maybe we sell this product for free and make them pay shipping. Get yours free today. You can get creative with it, but I usually just keep it simple, like on sale now. It can literally be that simple. Now here we need to paste our URL. So just make sure it works. I always go to the website. Just make sure your link isn't broken. Um, I'm telling you, this is good enough to get sales. Like th this website will convert. Um, and for custom call to action, I know a lot of people who will hit edit and keep this to standard and just select shop now. However, lately I've been doing dynamic view selected text and just select all of the shopping ones. So shop now, not learn more, not read more, order immediately, get it now. Um, yeah, these all work. Sometimes it'll say like sign up or pre-order. Those don't necessarily apply to us. So I'll leave those off. But yeah, that's it for this page. We can hit submit and our ads are almost ready to go for tomorrow. So we're going to come back to our campaigns. So here we have the honey bomb test. Let's click on that. And we just have one ad group now. And this strategy thrives when you have 10. So just duplicate this nine times. So that way you'll have 10 in total. And if you want to change the name of these because you have some OCD, you can do that too. Um, but that really, it really doesn't matter. You can leave these named whatever you want. Now, whenever you duplicate, you have to reschedule the time. The time never paced when you duplicate, which is weird. So again, November 1st, set it for midnight. Um, and now we can come to next. And on this page, everything should be pre-populated already. It should have your identity set. It should have your creatives. It should have your text, your link. Um, all you have to do is hit submit. And that's it for the ads. So they're going to launch tomorrow. So here it is. All 10 of our ad sets are officially ready. So here we have the honey balm campaign. We can click on that. And here are our 10 ad groups. Now inside each of these ad groups, we should have our creatives here. So creative one, creative two, creative three. And at midnight, these are going to begin to run. So some general benchmarks I like to look out for. So some general benchmarks I like to look out for. So if your total cost for the entire campaign hits $50 and you don't have a single sale, I would just turn the campaign off. So for example, this product I'm currently testing today, we have spent $46 and we had the one sale, which I showed you right here. And honestly, it's not looking like it's going to be a winner because my overall CPMs are wicked high. I'm paying $2 for a link click, which is honestly absurd. However, we do have quite a few add to carts and we're only paying a dollar for those. We've also had quite a few customers add the product to their checkout. So for that reason, I'm going to let it run a little longer. I'll check back in around $50 ad spend, maybe 70, just to kind of gauge it from there. But I would say no sales by $50, just shut it off. 
And if you have a ton of added carts and initiate checkouts, then yeah, maybe you let it run a little longer, but those are generally the benchmarks I'll go. And part of the reason we duplicate 10X, I get some questions, is because your CPMs are different on every one. All of these have the same creatives, yet this CPM is double this one. And we have some that are $12, but some that are $7. TikTok is just wildly inconsistent. So I found that by having duplicates, it lets me hit different audience pockets and sort of get some different metrics. So yeah, run this campaign for a day. If you're profitable, increase the budget. And yeah, that that's literally ads. It's, it's that simple. If you're profitable, go from 100 to 250. If that's profitable, bump it up even more. So yeah, guys, that is it for today's video. If you made it to the end, I just got to say you're a real one. Uh, if you haven't liked the video yet, please do so. Subscribe for more daily content. On the screen right now, I'll link two of my recent uploads. Check out either of those. But guys, this has been Eclipse. Thank you so much and peace out.